In the release note for Python 3.11, it mentions that it increases the speed of Python by about 10 to 60%. So how well does this actually translate into performance increase for Django? This is what I'm going to test out in this video. So just to go over how I plan to do this, I'll basically be using the repo I used for a previous video of mine where I showed how you can deploy Django using the Django Query Card template. I have two branches here. So first it's going to be called YT Benchmarks 1, the just normal. And then the other one is going to be called YT Benchmarks underscore 1. So what are the differences between those? So the first one without underscore 1, that will have Python version 3.9 and the YT Benchmarks 1 will have the Python version 3.11. You can ignore this. This is Git is not recognizing the changes properly for some reason. But if you check it out here in this file, so it's basically the same. Yeah, you can see here it's the same. There's no changes that happen. It's just GitHub is not working correctly. So what are the other changes? So with 3.11, Django, the version I'm using for Django will also change. So basically before I was using Django 3.2. Now I'll be using Django 4.1, which supports Python 3.11. And the rest of the stuff I have removed the version locking because I don't want there to be some sort of package conflict between Django 4.1, because these are all like old packages that came with Django Quick Cutter. And I think it Django cookie cutter is still not using the latest Django yet. So I just removed the version locking so pip can automatically decide which versions it should use for these packages. So what then am I going to use for testing out how much load it can handle for that? I'm going to use something called locust. So this is a kind of a testing server like interface where you can define certain tasks and it will basically create threads, which will, which will make requests to that server or that endpoint for a given URL. So you, with this, basically you can test out how many requests per second it can handle the web server can handle and what's the average response times, all that stuff. So I will basically need two servers. So one for the original YT benchmarks and another server for YT benchmarks underscore one. And I already worked on that. So I have two snapshots created for both of those. First is gonna be a locus snapshot and another one is for Django Cutter. With this snapshot, I will create two dedicated servers. So I don't want to have any difference between the two servers because on normal droplets in DigitalOcean, those are shared resources. So if somebody else in the same kind of machine is using too many resources, your resources might get choked out. So it will decrease your performance. So that's why I'm going to be using instead of normal droplets, I'm going to be using dedicated CPU optimized droplets for both of them. And to avoid having a situation where you're basically a CPU bound and the difference would be negligible. I would be using big servers, something with at least eight CPU cores and at least 16 GB RAM. So then with those two dedicated servers, after that, I create two locust servers. And this one, each different local server will check against one of these servers that I created. So let's just get into it. So I'll create true droplets using this one for locust. So for both of these, I'm going to be using CPU optimized. Uh, let's go with two, two SSD. I don't want to go with the more expensive one. So eight CPUs with 16 GB RAM so that we don't get bottlenecked. And then the difference is basically marginal. So. I'm going to be making two droplets. First is going to be called locus benchmarks and the other one I'm going to call zero two. Maybe this one I can call zero one. Okay. So let's create those and the other image for V2. So this also already has some of the data. So you'll see in a bit. So I already seeded the database with about 10,000 or so models. So both of them have the same amount of objects. So it's not a it will not be an issue of one of this one of this droplets has like less data in its database and that's why there will be a performance difference so basically i'm using the same exact data same exact everything except the version for the python and version for django so that any performance difference would only be because of that so let's create two droplets for these so that will be the o2 actually also this i'll be selecting the dedicated one this one and that should be it. So let's create both droplets here. Cool. So let's SSH into the locust one first. So SSH 
root add thingy. So I'm going to be using a locust file I created. So this one, test the locust. So I basically need to copy that into both of these. So let's create a new one, mixer locust and cd into locust. And then for the Docker compose, I'm going to follow the guide for running on Docker here. So let's just go with the Docker compose one. I already have Docker compose installed in this snap. So seed nano Docker compose. Cool. So there will be a, I'll create a file called locust file. Save that and then nano locust file.py and paste that x y. Okay, let's do the same thing over on the other. So again, make the locust, the locust, and then nano docker compose.yml and copy that y nano locust file.py for that this x y enter and then again docker compose up cool so let's check out this one first so let's see if lo the local server is running or not so it will be running on t9 port and here it is so what i need to do here basically is i need to put in the number of users how many total number of users will like simulating how many users will be using the website so let's say 100 and then spawn rate of just let's go with 10 and here i will need to put the address for the the server because i went with instead of doing all the domain stuff and everything it's much easier to just go with ip address so i'll be going with that so let's see if the other one is running now so this one or actually 137 oh that's number two Okay, so this one, 80, 89. So this is 164, 137. Cool, both of them are running. So I can close that. Okay, now let's go with the benchmark servers. So let's SSH into those. All right, so I already have a folder called Django Cutter where I cloned this repo. So you can find this in the link in the description. So if you want to test this out yourself, all you need to do is in the environments, you need to add a .production folder with the recommended kind of Django Cutter um, environment variables. I'm not going to share that here, but if you use Django Cutter as per my other video where I show how to deploy in production, you can see which variables you'll need. So here, let's just check which branch we're on. So good branch. So we're on right now YT Benchmarks 1. So let's switch to just the normal YT Benchmarks. So get check out YT Benchmarks. Yeah, it's spelled. Cool, so get pull origin. Cool, so the serializers, so just to double check, the changes are here. So this workout thing, as you can see here, both the serializers are up. So this will be work, workout, and then there's a set. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the other one. So this is number two. So SSH root at this thingy. Okay, let's close this up. So this is benchmarks number one, just to clarify again, and this one is benchmark number two. So let's go again into Django Cutter and check the, actually let's check first which branch we're on. So get branch and we're on benchmarks one. So let's just check, make sure that pull origin. So here we have the same exact serializer. So there's no difference. So there should not be differences between them because of the nested serializers. Now let's start up our service yaml up dash g and let's do the same thing here so dot compose dash f production dot yaml up dash d so for the services i'm going to be using i removed salary worker salary beef and flower because those aren't really necessary for this test i only have a redis a postgres and a django service so that's it now if this is working so slash API slash exercises, that's what I named the API endpoint. So here you can see there's 10,000 exercises here. And on the other one, you can see as well, so there's 10,000 in total on both of them. It's the exact same data. So the only difference is going to be the Django version and the Python version. So let's start. So this one, I'll point to this because in the task itself, in the locust file, so here, 
I have three tasks, right? So one is going to check for the exercise endpoint. One is going to check the sets endpoint. One is going to check the workout endpoint. And those are all basic model view set endpoints. Because the URL for that endpoint is basically listed here, I only need to copy until slash API. So slash exercise will automatically happen after that. So let's do HTTP this without that. Okay, here. And 100 and 10. And the same thing here. So 100, 10, and these is going to be the other one. So this is going to be that just up till access slash API. So this one is pointed to the first server, 143, 244. This one is pointed to the second server, 147, 182. So let's start swarming this one. And let's start swarming this one. So now Locust will start running like 100 users. And you can see here what is the request per second. So RPS is request per second. Failures is, aha, I missed one thing. This should be workouts, not workout. So let me just fix that up quick. Let's stop both of these. So this should be workouts, just so I don't do it again. So in this one here, it should be workout with a S. And the other one, it should also be the same thing. So nano locust file, workout with a S. Y, enter, and docker compose up. Oh, I need to docker compose up with the build, actually, because I changed the files just to make sure. So up and build. All right, so they should be up now. So let's do a new test. Same thing. Start swarming. New test. Start swarming. Okay, so now we see there's no failures here. And in the other one is the same thing. Cool. So yeah, basically here you can see the number of requests per second each web service is handling. So this one is pointed to the second one. So this service, so the one with 3.11 and Django 4.1. And this one is pointed to Django 3.2 and Python 3.9. So just on a, at a glance here, the request per second is 3.34, 35 on average. And this one is going up to 40. And if you want a more visual representation, there's also a chart tab. So here you can see it's averaging around 33, 34. And this one is averaging around actually 36, 32, so on. This one is actually increasing now, so 39. So here it's taking an average 2,900 milliseconds. And if you check on the other one, it's taking an average of 2,800 milliseconds. This is already actually looking quite different from a test I did yesterday where I was checking out basically how this median versus that median and the difference was actually pretty big. So not sure what's happening here. But yeah, let's just have it running for a bit and then we can come back to it in a bit. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> I know what is wrong here. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, I think I know. So I think this one is still running on the same one because I just did Docker Compose up and I didn't actually build it. So let's say build the new version instead of relying on the old version. So up D and then build first, D and then build again. So just to make sure that both of them are fresh copy and not the same branch. There's a, yeah, in production, there's a thing where even if you change the files, it won't change the running service. So this is recreating it and this is recreated. So that should be up. So let's just make sure. Okay, both of them are running. Cool. Oh yeah, you can also see that before the sets was just a number and now it's actually, yeah, it's, so before it was not using the actual pull down new branch, they were just using the old one. So let's run the test again. So start swarming, new test, start swarming. And let's leave this running until it's 20,000 requests. Yeah, you can see here now the request per, certain, uh, per second dropped a lot because of this nested serializer in both of them. So we'll be able to see clearly what's the median response time for both of them. And actually let's not go until it's like 20,000 requests. That's probably gonna take more than an hour. Let's only go up till let's say 2,000 requests, about 10 minutes. Yeah, let's just wait for about 10 minutes. But yeah, already you can see a pattern here. So this is the, so 143, 244, so that is number two, I should, oh my God, I should do it like this. So this is the first one, right? 147, 182, okay. 
and 143 to 44 that's the second one so yeah you can see here there's a fat pattern following already so the old version so the first version with python 2.9 is taking a median of 25,000 milliseconds and the new version is taking an average of 19,000 milliseconds so yeah quite a big improvement and we'll see exactly how big of an improvement it is after it gets to 2000 requests and after this i'll do another test to basically remove in the serializers so in the serializers here i'll basically remove these nested fields so that we can have more requests per second flowing and that way we can also see what's the performance increase if it also depends on how nested your serializers are and stuff like that about five more minutes to go looks like all right so this one crossed 2000 did this one yep it's <laughs> yeah you can basically see the difference between the two so one of them is at 2000 requests and the other one at the same time is at 2500 requests so already it's pretty clear that this one is much faster than the first one so let's just compare the median time. So what's the improvement like? So 19,000 per is the median response time here. 24,000 is the median response time here. So that's basically 5,000 improvement. So 5,000 by 24,000. So that is an improvement of 20%. So let's do the other test I just mentioned. So what I want to do is basically remove these sets. Let's just remove it directly in production. So nano serializers.py. So okay, let's delete that. And I'm also delete this one. So control X, Y, enter. Let's do the same thing here. So nano this. Whoops. Now this. Paste, enter. So with this, we should see more requests per second. Control X, Y, enter. So let's not do the same mistake we did earlier. So let's do up build. And also here, up build. Cool, so let's just check here if both of them are working. Yep, so now sets is just a list of IDs instead of a nested object with a nested object. So it should be the same here. Yep, so it's a nested object with nested objects. Cool. So let's just go through again. New test, 100, same thing, start swarming. New test, start swarming. Let's let this one run. I think this one we can get up to 20 requests per second maybe. Let's see how many we can get up to. Yeah, it's 20. It's about times four. So this one, let's wait up to about 10 to 15,000 requests. I think is the appropriate amount. And let's come back to this in about 10 minutes. All right, so I'm back and looks like we're about to hit 15,000 requests per second. And let's take a look at the median scores. So 28 on the second one, it's 2,800 milliseconds. The first one, it's 3,400 milliseconds. So that's actually a speed improvement at 22%. So let's just stop this, stop that. Let's take a look at the chart. So on the new run, the maximum request per second on the old one was about 33.7. On the new one, it was 41. Yeah, that's pretty good. 41.3 requests per second. There was a sharp drop here for some reason. Not sure what happened there. No such drop happened here. Very strange, but still. That is a 22% increase in speed. So if you've been thinking about upgrading to Django 4.1 and Python 3.11, as long as your project actually supports it. So if the packages you're using support it, I would advise you to just go for it because just changing those two things, the version number for Python and uh, Django, that seems to improve performance by 20. I would say for some system, for a more complex system, I would probably even go as far as 30% speed increase. 
So yeah, hope this video was helpful. And if you have any comments on the methodology I used, I think I covered pretty much every thing. So both of them, you're using the exact same data, exact same machine type, exact same location even. So they're both in the same zone. They should be exact same server type and both of the locust, like the testing kind of framework are also in the same region, same server size, same everything pretty much. And the exact same code, except for the changes in the version number. So this should be a pretty definitive benchmark for the old and new Django and all the new Python versions. So yeah, if this was helpful, just leave me a comment and a like and subscribe. And if you want to do these tests yourself for a lower price compared to digital, there's a code for Hesner down below with which you can get 20 euros. And with that, basically you will be able to run a small server. I use these guys for my production use cases as well. I probably spent over a thousand or 2000 euros with them. I actually recently switched over from digital ocean. So if I were to do a price comparison, digital ocean is about two times more expensive than Hesner. So yeah. Use my code below and that will help me out a lot and see ya. Bye.